Okay, two fair dice are rolled, okay? Now consider the following outcomes, A, B, and C. So A is the sum of two dice equals three, B, the sum of the two dice equals seven, and C, at least one die shows a three, okay? So what we're asked to do here is compute the probability of each of the events, okay? The probability of A given C and the probability of A given B, okay? Also, we're asked, are A and B independent and are A and B and C, sorry, A and C independent and B and C independent? Okay, so what I'm going to do actually here is just actually sh show, this is just a tabulation of all the possible outcomes, okay? So on the along the rows, essentially, that's just sort of, we'll arbitrarily sort of set one dice to be the first dice, and we'll present the outcomes along the row, and then the second dice to be the other dice, the second dice, okay, and its outcomes to be um, along the columns, okay. Now, so what we have here is a sort of grid of 36 uh, cells, okay, disregard the top, that, that, that one there. So essentially from here, this little grid here, okay. Now, each of those outcomes are equally probable. That's an important thing to remember. So this is essentially the sample space, okay. So uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, and so on. And if we sum those up, we get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now, you might notice that there is only one way we can get a 2, okay, which is uh, rolls of 1 and 1, respectively, okay. So the probability of getting a 2 is 1 in 36, okay. 3, well, there's actually two ways we can get 3. The first dice can roll one, the second dice can roll two, okay, or vice versa. The first dice can roll two, the second dice can roll one, okay. Now, so that is actually the outcome A. So if we just look at those two there, I just ha I have my pens pointing towards them there, okay. That is like, so two out of 36, or in other words, one, out, uh, one in 18 chance of getting a three. Twice as likely as getting a two, okay. And so on. There are three ways we can get four, okay? Three, one, two, two, and one, three. So out the probability of getting four, a sum of four is three out of 36, or one in 12, and so on, okay? Now, actually, I'll, I'll just actually sort of like remark that the probability of getting a seven, we could go, there's actually six cells with a summation of seven. Here, 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 and here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of thirty-six. So that's a one in six chance of getting um, uh, seven. Okay. Now, so uh, there's the the last uh, thing we're asked for is at least one die shows a one. Okay. Well, the first die could show a one. Okay. Or the second die can show a one. Okay. Or they could both show one. So that's uh, anyway. So essentially, how? So essentially, what we're looking at is this row and this column, okay? Or this column and this row, back to vice versa. So essentially, there are eleven out of thirty-six outcomes where there's at least uh, uh, one of the dice shows a one. Eleven out of thirty-six, okay? So. That's grand. So what we can do there is we just sort of like formally state all of those results. Just like I, I sort of said there previously, probability of A is 2 out of 36, which is 1 18th. Probability of B, which is throwing a 7, is 6, or a, uh, uh, the, where they sum up to 7, is 6 out of 36, which is 1 6th. And C is 11 out of 36. Okay. Now, what we're asked to do is calculate the conditional probabilities, okay? So what we're asked to do here is find the cells that correspond to both A and C, okay? Now, this is a sort of handy one because what, where do we get outcomes? So we're just looking at this row and this column, and we're also looking at uh, outcomes where there is the summation is a three okay 
Now, essentially what I'm going to sort of say here is that A is a subset of C. Okay? The event that the event A is a sort of sub event of C, if you actually want to look at it like that. Okay? So that means the probability of A and C is actually just identical to the probability of A. Two out of thirty six. Okay? Now that, that can actually happen quite often in, 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 in probability problems, where the probability of uh, something and something is just probability of, you know, it's actually very simple, or it can reduce to something very simple like that, okay? Now, so the probability of A given C, this is the conditional probability formula. I have it sort of scooched in on one line there. Probability of A and C divided by the probability of C. So that's 2 out of 36 divided by 11 out of 36. That is 2 out of 11. That is the probability of A given C. Okay. Likewise, the probability of B and C, let's just calculate that, is where, how many cells have a summation of 7? That's just sort of where they're in the rows that correspond, the, the row and column that correspond to... Uh, C, so this row and this column, okay? So out of those, how many cells have seven, okay, as a summation? Okay, so there's two. So there is, it's the, the, the numbers here, by the way, just to remark, the numbers here are sort of coincidentally the same as the last question, but it's just purely by coincidence. So this case, the probability of B and C is two out of 36, okay? So the probability of B given C is probability of A and C, sorry, B and C, probability of B given C is probability of B and C divided by the probability of C, 2 out of 36 divided by 11 out of 36, 2 out of 11 again, although, although that is just sort of coincidentally the same number. Okay. Now, finally, this is just a sort of quick question. Are A and C independent? No. The probability of A is one uh, two out of 36 the probability of c is 11 out of 36 uh, but that is not equal to the probability of a and c okay so if you work that out you will not get that uh, value okay so they're not independent likewise for b and c no they are not independent because the probability of b and c is not equal to the probability of b times the probability of c so we'll leave it there